Okay. And again, most of this is review. We've already touched on most of the stuff. Um, when they redid units one through 12, they pulled a lot of stuff from the pink book. So really half to three quarters of the pink book has already been covered uh, in ASL one and two, at least to some extent. So there's no no vocab in this, in this chapter, but we are gonna start playing around more with descriptive classifiers. So the first thing we're gonna look at is shapes. So you're literally just defining the size of the space, the size and the shape of the space. So boom, sphere, uh, a disc, a couple of different ways you can do it. There's, you know, depending on which perspective you're looking at. So well, let's just look at this, boom. You've got a small like saucer, right? Boom, boom, ball, boom. Then if it's a little thicker, you might use two fingers, right? So sort of the, that hand shape. For a little thicker we wouldn't use three this is we don't we don't tend to use this hand shape very often um i don't know if there are other cultures and languages that do but we don't so you've got thin medium large so if you've got like a pretty thick uh maybe a short pedestal um, boom there's only one for ball small i've seen this for like a small ball but most of the time you just kind of use the hand, the whole, the entire hand, all five fingers. Um, conical shapes, really easy. You just draw them, right? Or going up, right? Um, for cylinders, you can do this for thin. We don't really use two. Well, I'll just do the full. Uh, so very thin and really you could, um, if it's, this tends to be more of a cord, but it could be like a pencil sticking out of something. Um, and that's the ooh, right? Small. Um, dog makes start barking. I apologize. So we've got this. Um, and then slightly larger. This is the, the kind of mm, right? Um, and then if it's larger, you're just holding part of it. Or... So it can be uh, and then open, insert uh, any kind of joke you want to put in there. Um, now cube, we've seen this before. We've, we've done it in, uh, I think elementary one, we've talked about the difference between room and box. R room is four walls. Box is like this. That's generally the way that we separate this. If you see someone do this, that means box. If you see someone do this, it means room. Um, so cube, and it can be big, little small one, right? And again, we go back to the three sizes, small, de Niro, and large. So you can go back through any of these Huge cube, huge cone, or right, or right. so size again. All you're doing is taking that same shape, and sometimes the hand shape will change depending on like if you're like you wouldn't do. Um, I don't know if I can even do it. Um, this doesn't fit with this unless it means long like a really really long cord right so you could apply those um small medium large to any of these shapes it will affect your non-manuals it may affect the hand shape choice whether it's this this or this um and it may change how big of a size thing you show in the sun. So practice each of those. So go back through each of these, I guess practice them um, 
for each of those. So, boom, boom. Oh. Okay. So practice each of those so you feel comfortable and you understand how all of those things coordinate. So to look a little bit more specific, now how do you do a half of a globe? So we've got the ball, right? You can do... Boom. Now, um, the difference between a bowl and a half sphere, I would say is this. Bowl is bowl, right? Set it up, you've got a bowl, boom, or you've got a bowl, boom. And we know it's hollow inside. If you're talking about boom, that it's flat across the top, or boom, flat. Right. So we want to know that it's solid inside. Um, and then box, how big is the box? Right. Now one of the things you'll notice is that we're talking about perspectives. Like what angle? Is it up like this? Is it down like this? Is it? You can manipulate that. This is the locative side of classifiers. Like you've got things set up. One thing over here, one thing over here. One thing on the floor, one thing on the ceiling. Um, if it's a board, thin, right? Um, a difference between circular and square. I tend to put in or square or I like to draw the shape if there's any confusion. Uh, so it's good to practice both ways. If it's something you're talking about really uh, like um, right, that's pretty easy. We know what the shape is. But again, I've defined it. I think in the book they talk about a VHS case or cassette. So again, we get to, if you do this, it's a thin square rectangular dowel, right? Because it's flat as opposed to curved. What's nice is if you do this with the G's, what you've done is you said two sides are flat, two sides are flat. So there's the square you're looking for, right? So it's in the shape, it's in what you draw. We know the dimensions just from seeing it. If you're building a porch and you need four by fours, or four inch by four inch. We've done cones, we did both directions of those. So now I've already mentioned different perspectives. What if you know, you're looking at it from different ways. How would you um, show it? It shouldn't all be just generic in front of you in neutral space. Put it in the place so that the person is seeing it from the perspective you're seeing. If it's a disc on the ceiling, boom, it, you should be looking up at where it is. If it's a small disc, if it's a large disc, if it's a manhole cover boom, on, the, on the ground, boom. boom. Manhole covers are pretty thick, right? Boom. So the different perspectives, practice each of those same shapes we've just done, but put them in different locations. And, you know, to your right, to your left, above you, down below. Don't worry about back and front. You, would, you could do that. It's a little bit more awkward. Um, and here's some demonstrations, you know, the thin, something thicker, something really thin. Ooh, Go for a chai right now. So here's the activity we would do um, going through all of it. I'd like to say, okay, look up, look down, look at, but you can do that on your own. I mean, really we've done all of this stuff. We've played with, you know, saying there's a window high up, window high uh, down below, those kind of things. Uh, putting a can down on the floor, putting a can up on the shelf, all that perspective stuff we've already done. So now we're going to get moving into um, making more complex shapes. And we've done some th stuff where when we describe clothing or purses, where we like, boom, here's the purse, and there's the handle. 
right? So we've all done this. We've done this in class already. This is just a refresher. So we've got the base shapes and we know boom, box, cylinder, and disc, right? And I'm gonna do this for disc just so we see the difference between those thicknesses. So whatever is in the middle, whatever is the base object, then what are the things that come out of it? So we got a ball, boom, right? So we've got the base shape and then we move to the outsides of it and show the, the dowel that comes out. Right? So there's a thin flat thing that comes out. Right? So it's a conical thing that goes out. Okay. And what's nice is if you go from ooh to cha, we see that it goes, look, it's bigger. So non-manuals do change as you're doing it. Now notice I'm doing closed ones, right? Because they're smaller. I don't think there's a specific thing where you could go boom, boom, boom. I like that because it's clearer because a person could go that one now. You can go boom. I just feel it's not, it's not quite as clear. It's up to you, your mileage may vary. Um, cause you can also do boom, boom, boom. What I like about that is what I've done is boom, I have a reference point, put this one. Now this is the reference point and I put the other one on the other side. Boom, 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 boom. So you could do, here's the ball in the center, two discs, boom, on either side. So a lot of your choices in this might come from how they're put on. If you've got the first one, it could be that you, you know, I mean, there may be a time where this makes more sense than. So play with each of them. Uh, I know these are abstract objects, so we don't really know exactly what they're talking about. It becomes a lot easier when you're talking about an actual real world object that you can you can talk about. Um, so now I apologize. This at least this isn't one of the sexist videos where it's man complaining about woman. Um, in this case, the science lab, it is dumb man who's the assistant and smart woman who's the scientist. And somehow this guy got a job in this lab, but can't function. Uh, there's, I don't know, nepotism at its finest. So watch the video about the lab where she goes through and she's requesting very specific basic chemistry equipment. And he keeps getting the wrong thing. Um, this isn't that bad in terms of speed. It's not like the conversations we've watched. This one, they're being very specific and taking their time and describing things. So that's that will be really helpful. And I mean, they're both very clear, as stupid as the humor is, or as non-existent as the humor is, um, it, it is a clear video. Uh, if you watch the second video, that's where it gives examples of the things she's describing. So it, it pulls it out, slows it down, is a lot more specific. It's all stuff we've done um, and it makes sense. And what you're doing is you're just drawing in the air with your hands. That's what DCLs are. Um, so in general, we'll go back to the idea as here's how you describe something. Name the object. Standard rule for any time you're using the classifier. Say what it is. Right. So you always name what it is. Um, eh, I mean, unless you're asking what it is, then you're like. <sighs> My dog has that like one tooth that's up. Um, material. So what is it made of? Uh, are there colors? Blue, is it painted? Does it have material on it? Are there shapes on it? Patterns, we'll get to patterns in the next unit, in the next chapter. But right now that's where you would talk, right now we'll talk about colors. We'll add in patterns there. We did this all with purses and you know clothing before. So again, we've done all this, it's just review. Um, 
then if you've got to just describe the size and shape, then use reference points. If you've got a cup, boom, and it's got like a handle, big beer stein. Maybe it's got a lid. And then what I just did was an ICL where I did this and the lid came up, right? So showing how it functions. So these are the different layers. You wouldn't want to start with the ICL. You wouldn't want to start with a person to have no idea you're talking to Beerstein because it looks like it could be anything big lighter. Right? So the next sort of patterns to think about, and again, stuff we've given when describing rooms and things like that. Um, if you remember when we talked about uh, Chuck E. Cheese and, and things like that, the general rule of describing things, if something's large, start from here and go down to the bottom, right? Because that's what you're looking at. You don't look at the base of the statue, you look at the statue itself. Um, if something's like attached to the floor, like it's a fountain or something, you can start with the base <laughs> and work your way up. Um, if something is a chandelier, something from the ceiling, you could start from the top and show how it's set up. Right? It makes sense. If you were drawing this room with this object, that's what you would do. You wouldn't start drawing a fountain from the, where the water is and then realize, oh God, I've got it hovering two feet above the ground. Right? You'd want to start from the ground where you've got the perspective and build from there. So it stays correct. So the same thing with that. If it's attached to the wall, if something's sticking out from the wall, start from the wall, you know, curtains hanging from a curtain bar. So that's right after color slash pattern is establish the position and or attachment. So, you know, oh, you know, there's this, it's this, and it got a color. Yeah. And here's how it's set up. Now I'm really describing the thing. I've defined it, given some basic information, now I'm going to paint it. Now I'm going to show it. Okay. So as I say, that's the next patterns of the next. Um, so here's some practice videos where watching, uh, th these will get you set for instrument classifiers as we get forward and reference points. I think there's eight videos and in each one, they're going to just identify an object. They'll identify a material it's made from, describe a basic shape, uh, any details that it has, and then I want you to know perspective. Are they below it? Are they above it? Are they next to it? You know, how is it set up? Um, and then what is the the type, the, the sequence? Like how is, um, is there anything weird in how they present it? Or um, it'll, it'll make sense. I'm sorry. Um, it's just sort of a leftover question. Um, or if there's anything else of note. So there's a bunch of these little short videos just watch and again they're going to be fast because these are the in-studio things they recorded so just kind of kind of note um what thing they're talking about and how they describe it and what details they give and then a couple more um detailed now they're going to build and give a little bit more um a, a little more these the goal is to draw them i I'm horrible at drawing, so I will never ask you to draw anything. Uh, if you've seen me live in class, you've seen how bad I draw. Badly. Bad. Um, how inept I am at illustration. So watch these nine of them. And this is just, you can picture what the object is. I have a, I am, will admit, I have trouble with this guy, the guy with the beard. Um, I'm not sure if he has arthritis or something, but sometimes his hands are like, don't, aren't as clear as I wish they were. Um, uh, it, I, they, they haven't used him in subsequent videos. So I think they recognize that it was a little bit confusing. So anyway, that is 16.01. It really is stuff we've already done. It's a retread of stuff from ASL one, two and three. Um, but again, I'm going to fly through these latter units since we've already covered the material so that you're prepped for the next one.